how fast does your hair grow? How long can you live without food? And how does the erection work? I will answer these and other questions by introducing the work of a man who converted information into wonderful visuals, Fritz Kahn. I stumbled a Fritz Kahn image by coincidence seven years ago and became immediately infected by the Kahn virus. I work as a graphic designer and the images I found just blew me away. But I also discovered that Kahn's oeuvre was mostly forgotten because of Nazi censorship. There was no Wikipedia entry, no information about Fritz Kahn as a person, no summary of his works. So for all being not familiar with him, I'm happy to change that and pass the Kahn virus on to you. Imagine that we leave the campus Kronberg for some minutes and go on a short trip into history, 80, 90 years into the past, in the era of the Weimar Republic, the city of Berlin. Back then, Berlin, with its four million inhabitants, was the biggest city in Europe and the third biggest city in the world. But the city was chaotic, a place of glittering wealth and dark poverty. Beggars and veterans of the First World War crowded the streets, while at the same time the art and culture scene flourished. Modern production methods standardized and rationalized the working environment. This is a factory for vacuum cleaners in Berlin. Other industries were affected as well. Ninety years ago, Opel introduced assembly line systems for manufacturing cars in Germany. In 1923, Berlin Tempelhof Airport was opened. By the way, after only four years of construction, which is almost unthinkable today. <laughs> and the electric railway was invented during the Weimar Republic. In general, electrification expanded dramatically during the 1920s. This is the control room of a Berlin power plant at that time. Just to give you an idea, from 1925 to 1930, the number of households in Berlin with electricity tripled from 25 to 75 percent. In the 1920s, a nationwide telephone network was established. Here you see a room with female switchboard operators. The most important source um, of information was newspapers. Never again will there be more daily and weekly newspapers than at the end of the Weimar Republic. Um, in 1931, there were 4,000 daily and weekly newspapers in Germany. Today, we have no more than 350. Thanks to technical printing innovations, the newsstands also offered many magazines full of fascinating images. But not only printed material fulfilled the need for entertainment and information, new media also entered everyday experience. For example, the cinema became very popular. Big movie theaters sprouted like mushrooms. In 1924, radio broadcasting began in Germany. Today, radio is mostly perceived as minor medium, but back then it was truly a revolution. Because of this media variety, people had more access to information than ever before. Social and individual behavior were radically changed. And in the midst of this exciting time, in the middle of Berlin, lived and worked Dr. Fritz Kahn. Here we see him aged 40 with his sons, Emanuel and Raphael, in 1928. <coughs> Fritz Kahn was born on September 29th of 1888, so today it's his birthday. He studied medicine and opened a gynecological practice in Berlin. In addition to his work as a doctor, he wrote more than 20 books explaining the complexity of the human body and the world around us in everyday, non-scientific language. His main opus was a book series called Das Leben des Menschen, Life of Man, published between 1922 and 1931, an absolute mega seller. What makes these publications special is their large number of images. These five books contain 1,200 visuals. This is a page from a folder promoting the book series and emphasizing the large number of, of illustrations and images. Fritz Kahn was a genius in creating concepts 
for illustrations that combined both entertainment and information. He did not produce the images himself because he had no drawing skills. Khan collaborated with graphic designers, illustrators, sometimes with architects who brought his ideas to life. And from the uh, giant treasure of visualization methods in Fritz Kahn's books, I will present a small selection today. At first, Kahn was a master of analogy. He implemented the technical progress of his time in his imagery and depicted physiological processes by comparing <coughs> nature and technology, man and machine. This image is entitled Biology of a Roast Smell. It describes the smelling process from the olfactory sensation to salivation, as if it's happening in an industrial lab. In the upper right, switching connections are depicted just as we saw before in the photo of phone operators. Assembly line work is the analogy in this illustration explaining the act of mastication. In the upper part, the functions of the different teeth are compared with tools. In the lower part, working are sitting at an assembly line, demonstrating the shapes and functions of the tongue's taste buds. I mentioned the new movie theaters at that time. This visual describes what goes on in our heads when we see a car and say the word for car. After a projection into the inner eye, a mental movie projector runs a reel. A projectionist identifies the car as a car and sends his conclusion to a colleague who presses a keyboard to form the word auto in the voice organ. In this illustration, Kahn indicates that a car is shaped like the human ear. He presents similarities in the hidden structures of two totally different objects, explaining human organs. While the enthusiasm for cars was rising at that time, Kahn picked up that vibe and explained it comprehensible not only for technophiles. This is the famous visual Der Mensch als Industriepalast, Man as Industrial Palace from 1926. This life-size poster was included in the third volume of the book series, Das Leben des Menschen, and was also used as wall chart for school teaching. It's indeed the only Kahn image which is still preserved in the collective consciousness, although its originator went mostly forgotten. The illustration presents the human body as modern industrial company. In the upper stories, we see office workers wearing suits and white lab coats. Here the people think, read, and discuss. The nervous system is compared with the switchboard, and the nerves themselves are depicted as electric wires and cable connections. In the lower area, there's a big industrial plant with tubes, tanks, measuring instruments, and conveyor belts. Workers wear factory uniforms and are physically engaged, for example, in the liver, which is shown as a chemical factory. Most people would be uncomfortable with a realistic insight into the human body, but when it's visualized like this, the inner body is attractive and exciting for both young and old. With analogies like this, Kahn was also able to deal with taboos in a smart way. For example, sexuality. This image is entitled, Technical Schematic Representation of the Male Erection System. In the lower left, we see the male sex organs keeping the brain in electric suspense. This makes the brain receptive to an erotic impulse, in this case, an undressed lady. As a metaphor for sexual excitement, a ball is set in motion and has to overcome moral resistance <laughs> before it descends and sends off a series of signals from the spinal cord to the spongy veins of the penis. But Fritz Kahn's ideas reached far beyond comparisons of the human body with technical devices. Here we see a juxtaposition of a shell of a walnut and a human skull. The outer rind on both is so stable that it safely protects its interior. In this image, Kahn explains the meaning of clothing with a thermos flask analogy. On the left, we see a man with several clothing layers. On the right, several layers of a flask. And each textile layer corresponds with a layer of the flask. Kahn used another visualization method presenting internal organs as landscapes. As viewers, we find ourselves right in the middle of this microscopic world 
and are fascinated by the beauty of the human body. For example, Kahn tells a story fairy tale on a bloodstream. The story is about a scientist who shrinks dramatically and travels through his own body in 24 hours. In this image, he surfs on a blood platelet and enters a gland cave. This body landscape is one of Kahn's rare color visuals. Most of the illustrations were black and white, but he included some color plates. This wonderful scene shows the intestinal mucosa. And this isn't garbage flying through space. Here we are in the, inside the endless width of the oral cavity with a close-up view of food residue. With several of these images, Kahn, Kahn explained how food is processed and metabolized in our bodies. Here the food molecules break down into their constituent parts. The amylase molecules, depicted as wrenches, loosen the bolts of the mouth sugar. In Kahn's books, we also find information, uh, classic information graphics as we know them from nowadays. Some of them don't need further comments. This, for example, shows the food, food's journey through the bends of the intestines. The little clock indicates the speed of the food. This is a comparison of tea consumption measured in grams per person from the year 1926. Not very surprising, British people drink the most tea. But uh, German tea consumption has increased since 1840. The teapots are getting bigger. And this is a consumption of coffee measured in kilogram per person. Here are the Dutch and the Belgians in the lead. This visual tells us how long creatures can survive without food. Each of the eight parts of the illustration includes four tier of calendars, symbolizing the time factor. Over four years, the calendar pages pile up to a big paper mountain. And we learn a bird dies of hunger after nine days. Humans can continue without food for up to three more days. And some insects can live without food for more than three years. Another visualization strategy you often encounter in the publications of Fritz Kahn is based on absurdities. With exaggerated depictions, Kahn astonished his readers about the incredible human body's performance. For example, if you combine all of your hair into one single hair, your daily hair growth would reach a length of 30 meters. Every 40 minutes, that hair would grow by one meter. Or imagine this. The connecting tissue and ligaments in the pelvis are so strong that you could go on a balloon ride suspended from them. As the strongest of all the large bones, the human shin bone is so strong that it can support a load of 1,650 kilogram. This equals the weight of 21 men. And here is a depiction of a technical and biological miracle. The small human abdominal cavity houses not only stomach, liver, kidneys, pancreas, and urinary bladder, but also eight and a half meter of intestines. Each human body contains an average of 25 billion blood cells. Joined together to form a chain, they would encircle the world four times over. With this strange experimental setup, Kahn demonstrates that the body heat a man gives off in 24 hours is enough to bring 30 liters of ice to the boil. Let us take a look at the heart's amazing performance. It is so strong that it can move an elevator up five floors in 40 minutes. It could, it could, feel, it could fill three tanker trucks with 10,000 liters of blood in the course of one day. And it pumps 250 million liters of, of blood in 70 years, enough to fill that skyscraper. This illustration presents the average human being's food consumption in 70 years, as calculated by Fritz Kahn. For example, 4,000 kilograms of meat, 6,000 loaves of bread, or 12,000 liters of coffee. Of course, Fritz Kahn did not work in isolation or outside the political circumstances of his time. Fritz Kahn was Jewish. 
In the 1930s, he was forced to close his medical practice. And after the Weimar Republic failed, he was one of many authors whose books were banned and burned. He decided to leave Germany and began a long odyssey to Palestine, England, France, Spain, and Portugal. Eventually, in 1941, when all of his options were nearly exhausted, Albert Einstein, Kahn's friend from his time in Berlin, helped him get a US visa and escape from Lisbon. In the States, Kahn continued publishing books and articles, but he never again reached the creative brilliance of his earlier publications. And Fritz Kahn never returned to Germany. He died in Switzerland in 1968. Here is a final visual example of Kahn's work from 1939. This image is entitled The Doctor of the Future, but we could also name it The Data Nought. We see a doctor in an urban, loft-like environment sitting at a modern desk. He is not in physical contact with his patient. Instead, he is looking at, at a big media wall. By pressing buttons, the doctor connects with his patient and makes a remote diagnosis via screen, radiography, and measurement devices. Through speakers, even the patient's heartbeat is transmitted. The patient is on the other side of the globe, lying sick in the cruise ship India, somewhere on the ocean. You see, Fritz Kahn predicted telemedicine 50 years before it became routine. So this is how Kahn conceived the times in which we are living today. And with this visionary image, we return from our time journey back to Campus Kronberg, back to the present. Together with my sister Uta, I search through international archives to make Kahn's fabulous work visible again. Our monograph on Kahn was last year's official selection for the TED Book Club, acknowledging Fritz Kahn's inspirational mind and work as pioneer of information design. Let him surprise and amaze you with his creative ideas for imparting knowledge. And I hope you are all infected with the Kahn virus now. Thank you. <laughs>